One year ago this week, Hurricane Maria devastated Puerto Rico, leading to profound implications for its school system, which had already been criticized for underperforming. In the aftermath, thousands of children moved to the U.S. mainland, and almost 300 schools were permanently closed. Now, Puerto Rico schools are at a crossroads and facing an overhaul. Special correspondent Kavitha Cardoza with our partner Education Week has a report from the island. 12-year-old Yomar Sanchez Sintron says even thinking about Hurricane Maria hurts his heart. I was terrified. I lost my house and seeing it destroyed was very, very hard. I had my things there, furniture, my bed. It was very, very tough. Yabacoa was among the hardest hit areas when Hurricane Maria came barreling through Puerto Rico. This elementary school was closed for almost four months. Principal Maraida Carabeo Martinez plays a video of the aftermath. That's the lunch room. It lost all the ceiling. About 50% of the school was destroyed. I still have emotions. <laughs> Repairs are ongoing. A third of the students have scattered to the U.S. mainland. The experience was so traumatic, Martina says, even a slight rain can make students cry. When it rains and they, they see thunders, they hear thunders, they get afraid. So they suffer. Psychologist Joy Lynn Suarez says all of Puerto Rico has been traumatized. It's an island that's been ripped apart. These children were already dealing with so much um, violent surroundings, island that's bankrupt, you know, people leaving. They just can take so much. Suarez, who's also a consultant to the education department here, says she's seeing significant increases in rates of anxiety, depression, PTSD, and suicide attempts. Family has been torn apart. Um, we still have a lot of children that one of their parents is in the States and the other one is here. So a year in after the hurricane, I feel that we're still very, very present in, in, in hurricane mode still. It's against this background that the most widespread controversial education reform efforts in Puerto Rico are playing out. First, a bit of history. This school system was struggling long before the hurricane. The vast majority of children are low income, but by law aren't entitled to the same amount of federal funding that children on the mainland receive, even though they're US citizens. And each year for the past decade, roughly 20,000 students have left the school system. Hurricane Maria doubled that. From one year to the next, you lost, you know, almost 40,000 students. Julia Kelleher, the Secretary of Education here, is pushing for aggressive change. Many school buildings were half full or damaged, so she decided this summer to close more than 250 of them. Kelleher says the system needed cuts so scarce dollars could have more impact. The idea was to have buildings at 85-90% capacity so that you could buy sets of books that would benefit more students and put computers in that more students could access and take your resources and assign a full faculty and add a library and have two social workers. Kelleher believes this will improve quality, which in turn will improve learning. Puerto Rico's test scores are far below the U.S. average. The NAEP scores this year, there, in eighth grade, there was not one student, not one, who demonstrated proficiency. But changes to the educational system are fiercely opposed by both teachers' unions here. This is by far the worst semester that we've had in the history of public education in our system. Mercedes Martinez Padilla is the president of the Teachers Federation of Puerto Rico. Teachers are very anxious. Teachers fear that they may lose their jobs. Teachers are being relocated to distant schools because of the school closures. A lot of them don't have transportation. They are in fear that they may lose their benefits, their rights, their salaries, their pensions. So it's very bad for teachers right now. Even though there have been no layoffs, Padilla says school closings have resulted in overcrowded classrooms and children without special education services. Padilla sees a more sinister long-term agenda to destabilize education. 
they shut down the schools, they create a chaos in the public education system. People ask or scream for privatization. They make a business and they make profit out of it. Padilla is referring to perhaps the most contentious change, Governor Ricardo Rocio and Kelleher's decision to embrace charter schools. They are publicly funded schools that are privately run. Charter schools were illegal in Puerto Rico until this year. The Boys and Girls Club of Puerto Rico runs the island's first charter school. Eduardo Carrera Morales is the CEO. We understand that based on research and leadership, that that is not enough to break some of the cycles of poverty that, that have hampered the economy in our island. So to us, this is not about the school. This is about being able to break the cycle of, of poverty. Morales says this charter school is one part of their model. They also offer job training for students, parents, and after-school programs. Compared with traditional public schools, his charter school spends almost three times as much money on each child and pays the non-unionized teachers one and a half times the average salary through private funds. <laughs> Union leader Padilla is pushing for Kelleher to pay teachers more, limit class sizes, and forget about charter schools. The government used the hurricane as an excuse to achieve their plans of privatization. But Kelleher dismisses a secret agenda and says this is an opportunity to improve a struggling system. When you're trying to implement change, that's a remarkable moment in time because you, you're normally not given a kind of stop button, right? And then a restart button. It created a receptiveness to some of the ideas. Former U.S. Secretary of Education John King has a personal connection to the island. So this is a picture of my mother and her uh, younger brother. My mother was born in Puerto Rico and came to the Bronx when she was a kid. King, who's now the president of a nonprofit, the Education Trust, has in the past supported both traditional and charter public schools. But he says the bigger point is that the federal government should be doing much more to rebuild Puerto Rico. We know uh, that nearly as many people died in the aftermath of Hurricane Maria as died in 9-11. So there's a lack of recognition, I think, in many parts of the mainland that Puerto Rico really is a full part of the United States. King says short-term needs like water and power are important, but there also needs to be a focus on the long term. And that means investing in schools. All of us want great things for our own children, but if we want to live in a great society and a great country, we have to want that for all children. Wilfredo Vega missed most of his junior year of high school. There was no electricity, so we only um, went to school from 7.30 to 12.30, and um, there was no power here, so everything was very difficult. It definitely like, set us back from progressing in school. Instead of looking forward to graduating, Wilfredo has more immediate concerns. The most we think about, if, other, if another hurricane comes here, what will happen? For the PBS NewsHour and Education Week, I'm Kavita Cardoza in Yabacoa, Puerto Rico.